What? Um... You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, I had just defeated Moonlord with 1 HP and gotten the portal gun, so I was curious what would happen if I shot a portal into the sky. Little did I know, the portal soared through space and landed on a new world. Landing on the island, the portal closed and I was trapped. What's worse is I lost all of my items, but I have more than 1 HP. If I want to escape this island, I will have to defeat Moonlord and get the portal gun, so I can teleport to a new world, and this all begins with Stage 1, Slimes, Bombs, Iron Ore. From killing slimes, you can collect bombs and iron ore, and killing slimes all start with Tree. From Stead Tree, you collect wood and acorns. From said tree, you collect wood and acorns. As long as I have acorns, I have infinite wood. With the wood, I built a small platform, but it was almost night, so I encircled myself in wood and waited until the next day. I did this so zombies wouldn't spawn. I'll explain more about this shortly. Anyways, the next day arrived and I expanded the platform. With the platform long enough, it can spawn slimes. As I mentioned, from killing slimes, you can collect bombs and ore. There's a 1 out of 16 chance to get bombs and a 1 out of 32 chance to get iron from every slime you kill. The chances that the very first slime I killed dropped ore is insane, but also extremely cruel that it dropped tin. Wood. From the tree, I collected two acorns. Extending my island, I planted the two acorns, but it was night and now that my platform was long enough, zombies will spawn. I purposely avoided this before, because zombies suck. So I built a tower that would prevent zombies from reaching me. Ha! <laughs> Nerd! Can't get up, can ya? But this tower didn't stop demon eyes. You may have noticed that it started to rain. Despite this spawning umbrella slimes, which you may believe is good, because slimes equal bombs and ore, right? Wrong. They are useless and take up the entity limit, causing less regular slimes to spawn. The rain would also introduce flying fish, which are, if not, the most annoying enemies in Terraria. Anyways, I expanded the platform and built a slime trap, and as if on cue, the first slimes I killed dropped iron ore. I then accidentally hit the S key and fell to my death. While I'm falling, this is the perfect time to like the video and comment down below. Upon falling, I located another island. You see, there are eight islands in this world. A demon altar, lizard altar, queen bee spawner, the ocean, the dungeon, a herb lab, hellforge, and a snow island. Whereas not all of the islands are necessary for progression, they make it so you don't have to spend eons farming. This is where the chests come into play. Each island contains a chest, and inside the chest are materials that will help you progress. But I'll get into the materials once I reach an island, because at the moment, I'm still falling. Hey, Golem Temple! Because I located an island, I figured it was time to explore and platform down. On the island, there was a demon altar, bed, and a chest. Inside the chest was gem corns, stone, heart crystals, and master bait. As I mentioned before, each island contains a chest. Every chest will contain a heart crystal and master bait. This is to increase your HP and speed up fishing. But if you're paying attention, you'll notice there are only 8 islands and therefore 8 heart crystals. So the only way to acquire more heart crystals is by fishing. Now that I've collected gem corns, I can plant them and farm stone on top of gems. But most importantly, this enables me to craft a furnace for stage 2. But seeing how I am still in stage 1, I'll craft this later. Anyways, I activated the heart crystal. Then the most incredible thing happened. Slime fell from the sky and I wasn't going to pass up this opportunity. Soon after, I killed a slime and collected four bombs. Stage 1 is complete. Stage 2, Furnace Merchant. Stage 2 begins with building NPC housing. Because I collected bombs, the demolitionist can spawn. For the merchant, you have to have 50 silver in your inventory, and because I keep dying, I have zero. So for the time being, I platformed down into the cavern lair and planted a gem corn. Once it grows, I'll have enough stone to craft a furnace. I then continued to expand the platform. Chopping down the gem tree, I collected enough stone for a furnace. Oh, there goes my silver. I expanded my stone farm and encountered a skeleton. After shiving the skeleton for around three minutes, I killed it and planted more gem corns. The only downside to expanding the stone farm is that more enemies would begin to spawn, and the cave bats finally made their appearance. Leave me alone, beast! Ah! 
<laughs> Platforming down further, I located the lizard altar. Inside the chest was the usual, plus the single chlorophyte ore and lizard brick. But this isn't useful until hard mode, so for now I activated the heart crystal. In the process of escaping a zombie, I jumped off the platform. Whoa. I don't know what was more shocking, turning into mush upon impact or the discovery of the herb lab, but I'll explore it more shortly. Anyways, I built another NPC house and collected the dirt from the island. There are exactly 25 dirt blocks on the island, which is the amount you require to craft a dirt bomb. With the dirt bomb, I have infinite dirt. You see, a dirt bomb costs 25 dirt blocks, but you can collect up to 55 dirt blocks with a dirt bomb. So as long as you have 25 blocks of dirt, you have infinite dirt. Wow, I've never said dirt so much in my life. Huh? I took a chest from one of the islands and used it to store my materials. All that is left is to wait for the merchant to spawn. Okay, this might take a little- With the merchant, I have access to materials like torches, arrows, potions, rope, and the reason why I need the merchant, the anvil. But I require bars to use an anvil, so I crafted the furnace. Stage 2 is complete. Stage 3. Bucket, wood fishing pole. Stage 3 begins with building shelter. You may be wondering how this is related to a bucket. Well, it isn't. I just wanted a house. Once the house was finished, I turned my dirt into mud by using the singular block of water. With the mud, I can extend my jungle. Once the jungle spreads, trees can grow naturally, and I have access to wood again. I extended my soon-to-be jungle, built another NPC house, and made a mistake. You see, earlier I collected six iron ore, or two iron bars, but I thought you needed three iron bars to make a bucket, so to summarize events, I wasted an hour of my life, the demolitionist arrived, I took the bed from the island, purchased the bug net, purchased wood from the traveling merchant, and I discovered it only takes two iron bars to craft a bucket. To make a long story short, I blame Minecraft. Anyways, using the bucket I collected my single block of water, with the bucket of water, I can build a fishing area. So I built a fancy little house and a fishing hole. All that is left is to craft the wooden fishing rod. Stage 3 is complete. Stage 4. Fishing time. This stage pretty much explains itself, but I made a rookie mistake. You see, in Terraria, you can fish in an area as long as it's 75 tiles of liquid. But here's the twist. If you want to optimally fish, it needs to be around 300 tiles. This fishing spot is not. So I increased the size of my fishing hole, but I constructed a new fishing hole in the jungle because of specific fishing loot. You see, in the jungle you can fish jungle crates among other items. Inside the jungle crates, you can acquire a fiberglass fishing pole that will increase my fishing power. Anyways, I collected bait and began fishing time. You see, fishing is my only way to get ores, accessories, and heart crystals. In layman's terms, in order to progress, I have to fish. I'm gonna be here forever. You can just skip through time as I fish. See you later! One eternity later. Huh? You're back. You don't understand. You've skipped too far. You've been gone for thousands of years. Years of lonesome fishing. But you're back now. Wait, no. Where are you going? Please don't leave! Oh, hey, you're back. Don't mind the gravestone. Everything here is normal. To sum up the important items I fished, I acquired a tsunami in a bottle, sailfish boots, and an egglet. Taking a break from fishing, I went and explored the herb farm. Inside the herb farm was a chest with a staff of regrowth. This would allow me to increase my plant and seed yield. Anyways, I activated the heart crystal and collected plants. With iron I collected from fishing crates, I crafted a reinforced fishing rod that will increase my fishing power from 5 to 15%. Exploring down, I located the queen bee spawner, and inside the chest was crate potions. Activating the heart crystal, I continued to explore downwards and located the hellforge. Inside the chest was hellstone and a mushroom grass seed. But, most importantly, I had access to lava. Activating a crate potion and using master bait, I returned to... Fishing time. From fishing, I acquired a gold crate and collected platinum bars. This marks the end of stage 4. Stage 5. Lava, Obsidian, Platinum Pickaxe. 
To begin stage 5, I collected lava and burnt myself extra crispy. Yeah, I'm about to burn to death. I created a larger lava source. Using water on the lava, I have access to obsidian. But I can't mine the obsidian without a pickaxe that has a higher pickaxe power. To acquire a pickaxe with a higher pickaxe power, I extended the platform to the ocean. You see, this was my attempt to kill two birds with one stone. By fishing in the ocean, I can acquire either the reaver shark or more platinum to craft the pickaxe. But what actually happened was I extended the platform and fell off the end. So at the moment, I built more NPC houses, went fishing and acquired a jungle and gold crate. From the gold crate, I collected a heart crystal, and from the jungle crate, I collected feral claws. I activated a gravitation potion I collected from fishing. Exploring the world, I located the dungeon and shimmer. Inside the chest was dungeon brick and a heart crystal. I required platinum to progress, and you see, the only way to acquire more platinum is from gold crates, which are classified as extremely rare. So I returned to fishing and acquired the anklet of wind from a jungle crate. But I quickly gave up due to boredom, and a few moments later, I acquired platinum ore from a slime. Yes, I know I said the only way to collect platinum is from fishing, but this isn't true. You see, there is a 1 out of 32 chance to collect platinum ore from a slime. That's a 3.13% chance you will collect platinum ore. To put it simply, I did not think this would happen. Using my platinum, I crafted the platinum pickaxe. With the pickaxe, I finally have access to obsidian. Stage 5 is complete. Stage 6. Moltern Armor, Gunslinger, Goblin Tinkerer. Stage 6 begins with breaking a Crimson Heart. From the Crimson Heart, I acquired the Undertaker and met the requirements for the Gunslinger to spawn. At the Health Forge, I crafted Hellstone Bars, but I was interrupted by a Blood Moon. So I purchased the Mini Shark and Bullets from the Gunslinger. Using Lava, I built a functioning Mob Farm. I built the Mob Farm just in time, because as soon as the Blood Moon ended, the Goblin Army spawned. Using the Mini Shark and Mob Farm, I easily defeated the Goblin Army. With my Hellstone Bars, I crafted the Molten Pickaxe, Molten Helmet, and Molten Breastplate. Using the Molten Pickaxe, I collected the Hellforge, before crafting the Molten Greaves. It was time to locate the Goblin Tinkerer, and because he can only spawn in one of three locations, I easily found him. But before I could purchase anything, a bug fell from the sky, and the Goblin Tinkerer fell to his death. That's not good. Uh-oh. Once he returned, I purchased the Rocket Boots and Tinkerer's Workbench. From fishing, I collected all the accessories required, and with the Tinkerer's Workbench, I crafted the Lightning Boots. Stage 6 is complete. Stage 7, Boss Rush. To begin Stage 7, I crafted a Slime Crown. But a Blood Moon spawned, and I acquired the Shark Tooth Necklace. With the Slime Crown, I summoned the King Slime. This was a terrible mistake. You see, King Slime will teleport to a higher or lower elevation. But I'm on a single platform, and this means King Slime will just disappear. Oh, and I used all of my gold to craft his spawner, so I can't even fight him again. Anyways, I crafted more NPC housing. At the ocean, I felt an evil presence watching me. The Eye of Cthulhu spawned, and with the mini shark, plus my horrifically lawn platform, it was an easy fight. Using the treasure bag, I have acquired the Shield of Cthulhu, Crimson Seeds, and Crimtain Ore. Using the Crimtain Ore, I crafted the Flesh Catcher and upgraded from 15 to 22% fishing power. With my first boss defeated, the Dryad spawned. Purchasing acorns and grass seeds, I reconstructed the forest. Collecting dirt blocks, I expanded the forest even further. With the dirt, I turned it into mud and built the underground jungle, as well as extended the underground crimson. If you're curious why I'm doing all of this, you see, I'll require these biomes once I'm in hard mode, so I'm building them now, that way I don't have to in hard mode. Anyways, I built the Skeletron Arena. But before I fight Skeletron, I require sand, so it was time to reach the ocean. With my new forest, I have access to more than enough wood. Once I was at the ocean, I talked to the angler, looted the chest, and collected sand. Oh, and I built a house for the angler. To sum up the next three hours, with the sand I collected, I started creating the desert and a house for the nurse and gunslinger. But you see it takes 1500 sand blocks to create a desert, and my ocean is running really, really low on sand. So I quit and slime rained from the sky. This was my chance to defeat the king slime, and... and... <sighs> Let's pretend that didn't happen.
Anyways, I extended my cavern platform and built a mob farm. This will be immensely useful once I'm in hard mode. It's time to kill Skeletron, so using my sand, I crafted glass and bottles of water. With the bottles of water, I can craft potions. With my potions ready, I summoned Skeletron. Using the mini shark, I dealt slow and consistent damage. But once I destroyed his hands, the fight became increasingly more difficult. You see, in order to dodge his projectiles, I would circle his head and because Skeletron is so high in the sky, I take fall damage when I hit the platform. So using my diamond hook I crafted from farming gem trees, I could negate the fall damage. If I messed up at any of these steps, I would take crazy damage, and because I don't have max HP, I require every bit of life to win. Anyways, what followed was the most stressful 6 minutes of my life, but I killed Skeletron. Inside the treasure bag was the bone glove and Skeletron hand. Also, I just have to say, I've never used the Bone Glove before, but it's actually undervalued. With Skeletron defeated, it was time to kill the Wall of Flesh, so I started building the arena, during which I killed a demon and acquired the Demon Scythe. But sadly my good luck wouldn't last, and my innards became outards. Now that I have a magic weapon, I crafted Mana Stars and increased my overall mana. Then something unbelievable happened. Wood. No, no, that wasn't it. Slime started falling from the sky. Once King Slime spawned, I used the Demon Scythe and slammed back mana potions. A few moments later, and after taking out 16 hours worth of Skyblock Anger onto him, I killed the King Slime. You see, with King Slime defeated, the Dryad will sell Daybloom Planter Boxes. With the Planter Boxes, you can use them as platforms, and what's great about them is they can't be destroyed by lava. With the platform finished, I created a fishing hole underneath my cavern mob farm. By fishing in the cavern, you can acquire Armored Cavefish. With Armored Cavefish, you can craft Endurance Potions that decrease the amount of damage you take. They are necessary because I don't have max HP and the Wall of Flesh hits harder than a truck. Thanks to fishing, I had most of the potions I required such as Health Potions, Swiftness Potions, and crafted the rest. With my potions ready and a guide voodoo doll I acquired while building the arena, I summoned the Wall of Flesh. A very big problem then presented itself. I'm down here. The Wall of Flesh is up there. Thankfully, this problem had an easy fix. By increasing the height of the arena, I would be able to attack the Wall of Flesh. Once the arena was finished, I built campfires for extra regeneration. Preparing every potion I could, I summoned the Wall of Flesh, and with the new arena, I could actually damage him. But I ran out of platform, and my neck and knees became one. Anyways, I increased the arena. Remember how I said I could actually damage him now? Well, this also means the Wall of Flesh can damage me. So to make a long story short, after four more attempts, I had expanded the arena a total of 40%. Now, you may be like, 40%, that's not a lot. It's literally the size of the entire world. Anyways, I summoned the Wall of Flesh. This time around, with the mini shark, I targeted his lower eye and used the Shield of Cthulhu to enter a sprint whenever the Wall of Flesh shot his lasers. This allowed me to deal consistent damage and dodge his lasers. Once the Wall of Flesh health dropped below 1000, I continued to sprint, dodging the lasers and killing the Wall of Flesh. On top of the treasure bag, I acquired the Goat Skull. I am speed. You see, with the Goat Skull mount, you can just about outrun every boss in the game. Add that to the fact I have a platform the size of the entire world, I am pretty much untouchable. From the treasure bag, I acquired the Ranger Emblem and Clockwork Assault Rifle. Not only did I acquire the Goat Skull, but also the perfect loot from the Wall of Flesh. Oh, and of course the Demon Heart. With the Wall of Flesh defeated, I am now in hard mode. But I have many more challenges to face. So will I be able to survive hard mode and escape this world? If you have enjoyed, like, comment down below, and subscribe to get notified for part 2. Thank you to the very first member of the channel, King Drago. I'll play myself out.